Hi everyone, my name is Philip Lee, a fourth year medical student at SUNY Downstate, and my project is on behavioral modification as a treatment strategy for men with lower urinary tract symptoms thought to be due to BPH. So here are our conflicts of interests. Personally, I have none. Behavioral modification has been recommended as part of the initial treatment strategy in men with a diagnosis of BPH. In a previous study, we had demonstrated that patients with polyuria and oliguria have distinctly different phenotypes, which may demand different diagnostic and treatment pathways. In this study, we evaluate oliguria and polyuria phenotypes to identify patients for whom behavioral modification would be a useful strategy. A database was queried to identify men who completed both a validated lower urinary tract symptom score questionnaire along with a 24-hour bladder diary on a mobile app between the years of 2015 and 2019. Additionally, Euroflow and post void residual was also collected. Exclusion criteria included women or those with missing or incomplete bladder diary or LUTS symptom score questionnaire data. Additionally, patients were divided into three groups based on their 24-hour voided volume. The particular groups of interest were those with polyuria defined as having greater than 2.5 liters per 24 hours, and the oliguria group, defined as less than 1 liter per 24 hours. Lastly, SPSS statistical software was utilized to perform an ANOVA along with two tailed sample t-tests comparing polyuria and oliguria groups. So here is a summary of our cohort. We started with 504 patients. After the application of exclusion criteria, we were left with 331 men, of whom 26% were polyuria and 13% were oliguria. So the criteria for successful behavioral modification includes large enough 24-hour voided volume, sufficient bladder capacity, large number of voids per 24 hours, and a low likelihood of severe urethral obstruction. Here is our data, which demonstrates that in comparison to those with oliguria, polyuria patients are much younger, 55 versus 65 years, have a much larger 24-hour voided volume, 3,480 versus 767 mLs, have a much larger maximum voided volume, 473 versus 205 mLs, have far greater total voids, 13 versus 8, and have a much more normal Euroflow. 18 versus 9 mLs per second, and are therefore likely the group in which behavioral modification is most likely to be efficacious. So there was no difference in the LUTS symptom or any of the six symptom subscores between the two groups. Therefore, you cannot distinguish the polyuria from the oliguria groups based on symptoms alone. It follows from this that symptoms may not be a reliable indicator for the severity of the underlying pathology. Voiding diaries reveal that a large fraction of men, 26% in this study, presenting with BPH symptoms, also exhibit polyuria. These men are symptomatically indistinguishable from those with normal 24-hour voided volumes and even men with oliguria. This study suggests that patients with polyuria are likely to respond favorably with behavioral therapies beginning with reduction of fluid intake. This highlights the essential role of a 24-hour voiding diary in the behavioral management of men with BPH. Lastly, I want to take the opportunity to thank the organizers for allowing me to present my research project as well as the audience for listening. Thank you.